Thank you for watching the third video in our Wing Express How To series. If you haven't had a chance, please check out our previous videos on setting up Wing Express and updating the firmware on your Wing Express access point. For these videos, we continue to use the 802.11ac access point, the AP7522E. Today we will tackle a subject that I've received a lot of questions on, setting up guest access. This is a subject that is very important to people in a variety of industries. How do you allow your guests to have access to your Wi-Fi without compromising your business needs? With the help of my colleague and friend, Sonny Lee from Zebra, we're going to take you through step-by-step step just how to accomplish this. We are going to configure and set up a working captive portal or guest access on our Wing Express AP7522E. So without further ado, take it away, Sonny. And thanks everyone for tuning into our latest instructional video. Today's video is on the setup process for a Zebra Wing Express captive portal. As you can see, we've laid out five easy steps. The first step is setting up our guest WLAN, followed by our captive portal setup. We're going to assume that you are able to log into your Wing Express access point. If not, please refer to earlier videos in our series on how to log in and set up your Wing Express access point. Once you are logged into your Wing Express access point, we are going to start the process by setting up our guest WLAN. That can be found under the wireless tab on the left hand side of the screen. From the wireless tab, you can see we already have an office network where employees are currently logging into the system using a WPA pre-shared key. For our guest access, we're going to be creating a separate WLAN configuration for guests to log into, and we'll be using a captive portal and a radius authentication. To add our, WLAN, our guest WLAN, we're going to click on the Add button. Under the name, we're going to call it Guest. You can name that whatever you like. We're going to enable it. We're going to call the SSID guest as well, but that can also be named whatever fits your network. We're going to allow guest access on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. And the guest access is going to be operating on VLAN number 3 for our network. You can type in a brief description if you'd like. For our purposes, we're going to leave it blank for now. The next step is to select the guest security type. Once you select the guest security type, this will open up the captive portal section on the screen. The next step is to select the type of authentication that we would like to use. We have several types of authentication supported with Wing Express, from no authentication to a radius to a registration page to email to authentication via a mobile device, via SMS. You can also authenticate via social media apps such as Google Plus or Facebook. For our purposes, we are going to be using a radius authentication. From the radius authentication screen, there are three types we can authenticate via a self-authentication, meaning we're going to be running the access point as a virtual controller. You can have a controller provide the radius authentication, or you can have an external authentication uh, through a radius server. If you do select the external authentication uh, or our controller authentication, you can set up the IP address to point to those radius servers. For our purposes, like I said, everything is going to be local. Once 
we selected our authentication type, we can scroll down and see our captive portal pages. From here, you can make changes, adjustments. You can adjust the login screen, what it looks like, terms and conditions, the welcome screen, the welcome back, the fail screen, et cetera. All these can be customized to fit your needs. For our sake, we're going to go ahead and leave the default captive portal pages. So at this point, we can hit the apply button in the lower right hand corner. Now you can see we've added a second WLAN access, which is our guest access now. For our next step, we're going to be setting up our services to support the captive portal. We're going to be setting up the DHCP server and the NAT configuration for that. And we'll also be setting up the internal radius server setup. Then we'll conclude the video by showing you a preview of what the captive portal page will look like. So the next step is to set up our uh, VLANs. If you recall, we selected our VLAN for our captive portal to be on VLAN number three. So we're going to allow VLANs one through three to be used on our network. Once you've allowed your VLANs, we're going to click the apply button in the lower right hand corner. The next step is to enable our WAN access. We're going to go to the WAN menu on the left hand side and click enable. And we're going to be getting our WAN settings for our access point via DHCP. If your network is using a static IP or PPOP, you can set those up here. Once those are selected, you're going to hit click, click the apply button in the lower right hand corner. The next step is to en NAT enable our network. This is going to bridge our traffic to the internet. So we need to select the checkbox for NAT enable and click apply so that our access can allow our traffic to go out to the internet. Next step is to select our services. And we're going to enable our DHCP server. Click apply. And we're going to enable our radius server. And click apply. Next step is to add our VLAN interfaces. So we're going to scroll down the menu to our access point menu and click on our virtual controller. And we are going to add our other two VLAN interfaces. So our VLAN 2 is going to be our office. WLAN, and this is going to have an IP address of 192.168.2.192.168.2.100. You can adjust your IP address scheme to suit your network. You click apply. Now we're going to add our VLAN 3, which is for our guest access. So we'll just make a little note here. This is our guest access. And this will be operating on a 192.168. Dot 3.100 subnet. And we're going to click apply. Now that we've got our interface.
interface is all configured, we can click the apply button in the lower right hand corner to save our settings. Now we can go back to our services menu and add our DHCP server access. We're going to click the add button and for our office network we're going to be operating our network on 192.168.2.1 192.168.2.99 and again your IP schemes can suit your network needs. We're going to click update, click apply, now we're going to add our DHCP range for our guest access. This will be operating on 192.168.3.10 through 192.168.3.99. Click update, and we're going to click apply in the lower right hand corner. Now we've set up our DHCP server to support both of our office networks and our guest access all locally on the virtual controller. Next, we're going to set up our RADIUS authentication, which is also local. First step is to create a group. So we're going to click on the Add button. And in this case, we're just going to call this RAD group or RADIUS group. This is going to be a guest user group. This is going to be operating on our guest VLAN, which is VLAN 3, using our guest WLAN, which we just created. And if you wish, you can go through and set your rate limits and your access schedules here. For our purposes, we're going to leave these at default and click apply. Now that we've got our radius group set up, now we can add our radius authenticated users. We're going to click on the add button. And for our user ID, these can be whatever suits your network needs. We're going to call it guest access. And the password for our purposes is going to be simply one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is a guest user. And it's part of the RAD group, which we just created. Set up our data limits. as many 
guest access users as you want. You can create different rules for each guest access. It's really up to your network needs. So now that we've got this all set up, let's give you a preview of what your captive portal should look like. We go back to our wireless tab, click on our guest network. We can click on the preview button. And this just gives you an idea of what your captive portal will look like. All of these screens are customizable. The wording, the T's and C's can all be customized. But your user would open up their browser and using the credentials you provide, your guest access credentials, they'll be able to sign into their network and you'll be able to establish the parameters by which they're allowed to use your network. That concludes our instructional video on Captive Portal. We hope to see you on future videos. Thank you.